In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an awesome file upload library called FilePond, which is going to make our lives incredibly easy when it comes to uploading our files and converting them to be stored in the database instead of being stored on the server so that we can use it with Heroku easier. Let's get started now. In order to get started saving our files into the database directly, we're going to use a library called FilePond, which will make uploading our files much easier and it'll also allow us to have a really cool looking file upload on our browser so that when we upload an image to be used as the cover, it'll actually display a preview of that image inside of the select box. So in order to use FilePond, we can just go to their documentation page and we can see that we can just download these files directly from a CDN, which we can include into our site. So let's copy over the link for the style sheet. And we do wanna put this inside of our layout page because we want this to be available on every single page that we're using it on. So we're just going to put this in here below our meta tags. So that's just going to be our CSS. And then let's also include the script tags. And we're just going to defer the load of these script tags so that way that they get loaded and ran after the entire body of our page is done rendering. Now, just including these two files is not enough in order to incorporate everything that we want with FilePond. By default, this is going to upload the files to our server asynchronously as soon as someone selects them inside of this dropdown. It also doesn't have any previewing or anything like that. And we want to actually send the file with the server form submit. So we need to download a package from this library. So if we go into the menu here, we can look at the plugins and they have a plugin for file encode, which is right here. We can click on this, view the documentation for it. And really all we're looking for is down here, the different script types we need to add. So as you can see, we have this single script tag for the actual library that we're going to be using, which is just a plugin for FilePond. We also want to make sure we defer this and we're going to need a couple more plugins. So let's look back in the menu, scroll down here. They have image preview, which is the one that allows us to get that nice preview right here. So we're also going to include that into our library. And this one is going to take both a style sheet here. So let's copy that style sheet over and include that into our page. And we also want to make sure we include the JavaScript here. So let's copy over this JavaScript and include that onto our page as well. And we want to make sure that we're maintaining the same order. As you can see, they import the file pond.js file after this plugin. So we are also going to make sure we import our plugins before our file pond.js. The very last plugin that we're going to be using is one that's for resizing images because a user may upload an absolutely massive image and we don't want to store a huge image on our server. So we're using image resize in order to resize the image to be as small as possible so we don't have to worry about taking up too much space in our database. Again, we're going to copy over that script, paste it in here, and make sure that we change the loading to be deferred. That way it'll load as soon as the page is done. Also, we need to make sure we do it with this one as well. And that's all the different JavaScript and CSS files we need to include into our library in order to use FilePond. The last thing we need to do is actually include our own script tag, which will allow us to actually set up the file pond library. So we're going to create that inside of a folder called JavaScripts, and we're going to call it file upload.js. And we just want to close that script tag off. And we need to make sure again that we use defer here. So this gets ran after the page is done loading. And now let's create that file. We need to create this inside the public folder since the public folder is available. And we're going to call this folder JavaScripts. And inside this JavaScripts folder, we'll put file upload.js. The reason I'm putting this in a JavaScript folder is just so that we have some organization so that we know that we have JavaScript files in one place, CSS in another place, our uploads in another place, and so on. In order to get started with FilePond, we're actually going to go over to their GitHub page where they have really nice documentation on how to get started with the basic setup. If we scroll down here a ways, you'll see that all that we need to do is we can just run filepond.parse document.body, and this is going to turn all file inputs in our entire page into FilePond inputs. So let's just copy that over. And now with this single line of code, we're parsing all of our file inputs into file pond objects, but we need to worry about using the plugins that we installed earlier. So let's go back to this documentation, scroll all the way up to the menu. And if we go down to the introduction section for plugins, we can see that if we read this, it said that plugins can be registered with file pond using the register plugin method. So all we need to do is before we actually parse everything, we need to go up here, we need to call that filepond.register plugin method. And this method is just going to take a list of all the plugins we want to install. So we have the filepond plugin for image preview. And we're going to do two more here. So we have the one for image preview. We have one for image resize. 
And lastly, we have our file encode. And the names for all these plugins can be found right down here so that you're easy to know which ones you need to worry about, including also if you go to the pages for these and you scroll down just a little way so you'll see it has the name right here, which is going to be the name that you want to include into your register plugin. Then with all the plugins done, the last thing that we need to do is if we check over at the GitHub, you'll see that we need to add a class of file pond to our file input in order for it to be parsed by this file pond.parse. So we just want to go into our books here. We want to find that form field section. We want to find where we're loading up the cover image right here. And we're just going to add a simple class here of file pond. Now, if we save that, start up our server by running npm run dev start, wait for our server to start up. And if we go over to our page, refresh this here, try to add a book, you'll see that we now get this not so nice looking, but much better file input that we can drag and drop or just browse a file, click on it, for example, and then you'll see that we get a preview. But right now, this preview is not really configured how we want it to. We want the preview to be more in line with the exact size of the book and not so wide with a bunch of black bars on the side. Luckily, we can easily change this with some properties built into FilePond. We scroll up here and we go to the API section for the FilePond instance and we scroll down quite a ways. We want to modify the style. So we just keep going until we find the style section, which is right here, our styles. And we want to change this style panel aspect ratio. We want to make this aspect ratio the same as the book cover aspect ratio that we've already built into our application. So back into file pond, we want to use an option. So we say file pond dot set options. And this is again, something you can find inside of the documentation. If we scroll all the way back up here to the top and we go to the file pond object and we look at the methods, you can see there's a set options method for us to set all the options for our file pond instances. In our case, we want to set that value. So instead of here, we can take that style panel aspect ratio and we want to set it to the ratio for our books. And if we look here, we see that we have 150 height and 100 width. So we can just use that as our access ratio here, 150 divided by 100. And if we save that and refresh our page, you'll now see that we get a perfect aspect ratio box. And if we add in a cover, you see that it doesn't have any of those nasty black bars and it fills the full aspect ratio. Of course, this is quite large, way larger than we'd actually want it to be, but that's something that we can change later when we start styling the actual pages and our form inputs. Another thing we need to do is set the options for how we want to resize the images, because we always want them to be essentially 150 by 100, since we never need them to be larger than that. So if we go into File Pond here again, scroll up back to that plugin that we installed for using the resize, and we scroll down to the properties here, we can see that we have a target width and a target height that we can set. So let's set these target widths and target heights, and we can paste that down here. Target width is going to be 100, and for our target height, we're going to be using 150. And there we go, that'll actually resize our elements. So now when we upload something inside of here and it gets posted to our server, it'll never be larger than 100 wide and 150 tall. Now that we have that all done, let's actually work on the back end of it and the parsing of our actual file. We can do that inside of our root books.js. And the first thing we need to figure out is how this file was actually getting sent to the server, since it's not actually getting sent as a file object as before. If we look into our plugins again that we used, we're using the file encode plugin. And if we read through this plugin, it says that it uses a JSON string and it's going to send that to the server. And as you can see inside of the string, it has a bunch of different properties. Namely, the main one we worried about is data, which is a base 64 encoded version of the file. It's essentially a string representation of that image file that we are uploading from the browser to the server. So we don't actually need to use a multi-part form anymore. This means inside of our new here, we can remove this type for multi-part form since we're uploading just a single string, which is a JSON object, as opposed to a form with a field inside of it for a file. Also inside of our books.js route, we no longer need to worry about this upload section because again, we're not getting a file, we're getting a string. This means that this library that we're used up here for Molter is no longer needed in our project. So we can actually remove this Molter library from our project. And we can do that by just saying npm uninstall Molter. This will remove Molter as a dependency since we no longer need it. Also, let's comment out this code here that was being used by Molter. So we can comment out that, comment out that, and there we go. Now we no longer have any of our Molter code inside of our objects. Now, in order to actually save our files, we need to modify our books object for our model. So let's go to our books model 
and instead of storing a cover image name, we just want to store the actual cover image itself. Also, in order to render this cover image, we need to know what type of image it is, whether it's a PNG, a JPEG, a GIF, or so on. So we need to add another property here, which will be cover image type. This is going to be a type of string, since it's just going to be a string representation. And of course, it'll be required as true, since we are requiring the cover image as well. We also need to change the type of our cover image. This is no longer going to be a string representing the name, but it'll be a buffer of the data representing our entire image. Now that we have our model finished up, let's go back into our route and actually work on uploading that book file into our actual book model here. In order to save our cover, we're going to create a function, which is going to be, be called save cover. It's going to take our book object as well as the actual encoded JSON cover. That's going to be in our request.body.cover file name because we set the name of our file input to cover. Now let's go down here a ways and create that function. We can come down, we can save function, save cover, and again, this is going to take a book and it's going to take an encoded cover. So we'll say cover encoded. And inside of here, all we want to do is check to make sure that our cover is a valid cover. And if it is, we want to save it to our book.cover. The first thing we need to do is just check to make sure that our cover encoded is actually a valid variable. So we'll say cover encoded is not equal to null. We'll actually check if it is equal to null. And if so, we're just going to return from this function so that we no longer want to actually do anything. Next, we can say that we want to get the actual cover unencoded. So we're just going to parse that string because this cover encoded is just a string that's actually JSON. So we'll parse that string as JSON into a single JSON object called cover. Then again, we'll check to see if the cover is not equal to null because potentially this is just a empty string or some bad formed JavaScript. So this will just return null if that's the case. So we want to check to see if this is null. And we also want to make sure it is of the correct type. If you remember up here at the very beginning, we were checking to make sure that our image type was inside of this image mime types variable we created. So let's just copy this check so that we can use this down here. And we want to do that same eject check to make sure that our mime types is included. But instead of using file, we're going to be using cover here. And as you can see, this variable type on the object is what we want. So we're going to use that type variable to check the image type here. If it does include that and it's not equal to null, then we know that this is a valid cover and we can actually save our properties to our book. So we can say book.cover image is just going to be equal to the cover.data. But we can't just send it at this data string. We actually need to convert this to a buffer. So we're going to say new buffer. And we want to say buffer.from. This will allow us to create a buffer from some set of data. In this case, this is base64 encoded data. So we want to say that it's base64 encoded by just typing base64. Here is the second parameter. This first parameter is our data, and the second parameter is how we want to convert it from. Lastly, we need to set the book.cover image type to be equal to the cover.type. That way we can later extract out this buffer and convert it back into an image of the correct type. Also, now that we're no longer storing our images on the server, we no longer need to worry about removing book covers from unable to be uploaded books. So we can completely remove this code, go back up into our crate here, and we can remove this section for removing the book cover if for some reason it failed to upload, since it just won't save it into our book object here, since we're actually just storing the file inside the book. Lastly, we can get rid of this cover image name and file name section because that's all being taken care of by this save cover function. And that's really all we need to do in order to get this hooked up from the back end. So let's go into our add book here. We have our cover image. We're just going to create a title here, which says new book, give it a random publish date, random page count, random description. We'll zoom this up so you guys can see. There we go. And let's just hit create. And of course it says our server can't be reached because we never actually started our server. So let's go back here and start our server back up again. Refresh this page to the new books. There we go. And again, we'll just give it a new book as that. Get the publish date in there. Give it some page count. We're going to just choose this book cover. And lastly, a random description and we'll hit create. And you'll notice that it's not actually able to display our image for our book. These two first ones are obviously broken because this is based on our old section using these cover images. But this last one is broken because we're not properly converting our data that we have for down here, our cover image and cover image type into an actual image to be displayed. If we go into our book model here, 
And we see down here we have this cover image path. This cover image path is just combining together the name of the path, but we don't really need that anymore because we don't actually have a path name. We need to convert our data here and the type into an actual usable source. So in order to do this, we can take this and make it so that it's checking that the cover name exists. And we also want to make sure that the actual type exists. So we can say this dot cover image type is not equal to null. And if that is the case, then we want to worry about actually returning something that can be useful. So we'll say return, and we want this to be the source of our image object. We're going to use a template string literal here so we can actually use variables inside of it. And something in HTML we can use is called a data object. This data object that we can use as a source for images allows us to take buffer data essentially and use that as the actual source for our image. So we can say data, and then after that, we need to put the type of this data. In our case, this is just going to be the cover image type that we saved inside of our database. Then we need to tell it the char set. In our case, this char set is just going to be set equal to UTF-8. Then we need to tell it how it's encoded, which is again going to be base64 because it's the easiest way to encode for us. And lastly, we need to put the actual data inside of here as base64 encoded. So to do that, we're going to use this dot cover image, and we're going to send this buffer into a string, and we want it to be a base64 encoded string. Now this is going to return to us the proper string for our image source in order to display the image from our buffer and type. So if we refresh over here, you'll see that our image is now being displayed properly for our new book title. Again, these two are never going to work again because they rely on these cover images that we have stored in our uploads folder, which we are no longer using. So we can delete these when we finally add the delete functionality into our application. But for now, just completely ignore these. The last thing left to do is to actually clean up our code of all the code that involves uploading a file and storing it on our server. The first main place we can delete is this uploads folder is no longer needed. We can completely delete that. Now with that deleted, we can go back into our books upload here. We no longer need this upload path which means that inside of our book model, we no longer need to store this cover image base path, and we no longer need to upload this require library of path. And that cleans up a lot of our code right here. Again, remove this export for that image path that we no longer need. And again, in here, we don't need this multer code. So let's remove that completely from our application. We no longer need to access the file system or the path variable again in here, since those are no longer needed to store our files. And now this is much cleaner and much easier to use and it also stores our file inside of the database so that we can use it inside of Heroku. Let's go ahead and actually upload to Heroku. First, we'll go into our git ignore and get rid of that public uploads folder, since again, we removed that. And now we can actually commit to git. Stop our server. We'll add all of our changes to git. We're gonna make a commit to git with a message here that says file upload database, just so we know what we changed. And lastly, let's push those changes to our master branch on GitHub as well as we want to push those changes to Heroku. So we're going to say Heroku master. And this is going to deploy our changes to Heroku. Now that that's deployed, we can open our application in Heroku and we can see that our current images are broken. But if we tried to add a new book, for example, give it a title of new, whatever author, doesn't really matter any of this information. We just give it a random file. And lastly, random description. If we create that, you'll see that the image actually stays and shows up here. And best of all, if we go into Heroku and we reset our server, for example, if we deployed some changes or just the daily reset that happens, and we refresh this over here, you'll notice that our image is no longer going to disappear as soon as our page refreshes. There it goes, and you see that our image is still here, and that's because it's on the database and not actually on the server. And that's all it takes in order to set up FilePond on your server and to convert your files from being stored on the server to being stored in the database. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at creating the rest of our author pages, which are going to be the show, delete, edit, and update pages. So that video is going to be linked over here when it's available, so make sure you check that out, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the new videos in this series. Thank you guys very much for watching, and have a good day.